Hi there, welcome. My name is Anna and I make junk journals from old books and mostly repurposed sources. Today I thought we would make a bit of progress on Eva that we started last week. Uh, but before that, I have some shares, some things to share with you. First, I thought this one is good. Um, I found this one. It is not thrifted. I bought it online uh, from a, a company in Netherlands. I think, yes. Uh, this one uh, is from Vessen Creative, and I believe that is a, a Dutch uh, company. Uh, it's a whale tail punch, and I have been looking for a whale tail punch for years. I started doing junk journals in 2017, in January, so I have been doing it for five years, six years, <laughs> a few years anyway, but I have always been on the lookout for this one. Not this one, but the Stampin' It Up punch. But this is just as good, uh, and I am very happy. It was very fast delivery, and... It was quite affordable. Uh, it says journal whale tail tab heavy duty punch. And um, well, for me to Sweden, the shipping was twice as much as the punch itself. But if you find it, you buy it. Uh, the company that I bought it from is called Doe at Ding. And I will try to put a link down below uh, in the description box if anyone else is interested in purchasing one. I'm happy with that. It makes pretty little whale tail tabs. So now you will see this everywhere in my books. Just thought I would share that because I know that there is more of you that has been looking for it. Uh, then <laughs> I had to, after watching Nancy over at Wishes and Weeds, her thrift haul a little while back, uh, she found this gorgeous book. You know, I love dogs. I have two dogs myself. They are Finnish lap hunts. And uh, she had found a book with vintage photos of dogs. And I had to go with the one myself, of course. Uh, Prince and other dogs. It's jam smacked with photos of dogs and their owners. And I love it. So, of course, I ordered mine from Australia. And it was quite fast shipping as well. Uh, I think including shipping I paid $20 but it is well worth it because it's a beautiful book and it would make a great journal as well if you just cover up the, uh, the barcode. But uh, I can't cut this one up. I have to keep it so I ordered another one. Um, from Great Britain this time. Uh, and that one I can cut up, or the one that is in worse condition. But great tip if you like dogs and you like vintage style. And my journal style is vintage. So for me, this is a great find. Uh, so that was my little share. Um, let's see what I plan to do today. Uh, I plan to work a bit on the cover. First, I was thinking about putting brads at the corners, but I will not. Uh, I think it looks good as it does, but I want to add some labels. I have this Tim Holtzy uh, label uh, package, which has tons and tons of these labels. Uh, and I will actually add three of them today. I have decided to cover up the author's name there with this one. So I will start by inking it. And this is vintage photo. Distressing. Very well used. <laughs> I have had this for years and it still works quite well. I have a few more colors, but I try to limit my purchases a bit. Because I want to use mostly repurposed sources. This is not a repurposed source because I bought this. But, you know, 
some things you have to <laughs> get to embellish your journals, I think. Uh, but I also started to, uh, when I could, uh, get these kind of labels myself, when I can lift them from old books. So I have a small collection of real true vintage uh, cool labels. This one is a little damaged, but quite cool. I have a few of them and I use them whenever I think they fit. But if you just, just have 10 or 15, it's you kind of like to hoard them a bit. I'm using my art glitter glue uh, to make this stick and my little tweezer. It's very handy, this tweezer. I got it in a set of five different tweezers. Can't remember the brand because I threw out the label, but I think um, this unusual one you just let it go and then it holds on to things. I, I love that because sometimes when you have to do something for a very long time, it can get stressful for the hands to keep pushing like this. And sometimes my hands are aching and then I don't. I like this one. Then I have this little one that I thought I would put down here for some interest on the front. So I will, of course, ink it up because I like the grungy vintage look. Like that. And you see, and just let it go on it. I don't know what they're called, but um, I love them. And I use them more than any other tweezers that I own. I use it all the time. Excuse my hair. There. And let's always keep some tissue ready in case it splashes out. And then I have a third one, this little one. Um, and I thought I would put this on the back. Right now it looks like this. And on the spine and on the back. And I thought, upside down. I think I would put it there. And then there's something to catch your eye on each side. Ink it up. This video will be short and sweet, I think, uh, and I will. I decided to keep on working on this book online uh, or video on video, so um, I will make progress along with you, so you can see my entire making of a book. That's nice. I like that. I'm satisfied. Don't forget to put the needle back in the glue and the lid on the ink. I also learned that storing your ink upside down, your distress ink pads, will make them last longer because then they won't dry out as fast. So I keep them upside down, upside down and then I, inspired by, once again, Catherine, uh, sun inside journals. Uh, I label them so I don't have to rummage about every through everyone. Uh, just see which one I want and grab it. And then I also write on my little sponge. Yes. If you hear a ringing noise, it's the ice cream van that is due today. And it's going through <laughs> outside my window soon. <laughs> I can see it. I have my, my setup at the window, so I get natural light. Here it comes. A new driver today, you see. Uh, that signal is well known all over Sweden. It's called Hemglas, Glasbilen. Uh, and uh, ev uh, most kids love it anyway. So now I thought I would go through the text block 
this is the text block and if you watch my last video you know that I decided to put it inside the book and let the book uh, rest uh, with the text block inside so that it would keep its shape once I did the, a bit of repair work and stabilization inside and that worked I think uh, but now I am going to see what I can find that I want to use in this textbook. Uh, I start by taking off the. Oh, what are they called? Suddenly it flew away. Sometimes I reuse this. It will come to me what they call. Uh, so I try to keep them just in case I want to reuse them when I glue the book back together. So those I will keep in my little basket where I keep all the things that is that belongs to this book. Because I actually have several books at the same time going on. And I work right now the, the one I'm, I was have been working on the last few days is in the book press. Uh, and so I decided to work on Eva for a bit. Then I want to keep the fly leaves because they are pretty and they can easily uh, be made into new journal pages. Or uh, you can use them to back journaling cards and so on. You can write on this. And I like the green, greenish color of them. So that I want to keep. Put them aside. Then I usually want to keep the first pages because lots of white says what the book is called. Uh, I want to keep the writer's photo, the author's photo. I don't know what I will do with it. Maybe it will become a journal card. Um, but I will try to, yes, it was just glued on top of that page. So I will keep Mr. Harry Blomberg, Blomberg, keep him in the basket. This one I also like to keep. Maybe do, a, maybe do. I always do a bit of collaging on this page, um, and mostly because on the back side, very small text. There is the publishing year nineteen forty six. So I will try to get these out as whole folios. So I am looking for the. The signature threads and they are here then I use one of those um, staple removers and just lift up the threads and then I take my small scissors and snip them off and that way I don't damage the pages as much and it's easier to cut the threads thank you to Nancy from the wishes and Leaves for that tip I think I heard it from her the first time. I think she does that as well. Oh, there is lots and lots of glue here. Threads of glued in as well. Um, this one I will not keep. Then I saw that. Oh. You see the glue is tearing up the pages. Uh, I saw that um, every chapter has a, a header. Maybe I will use those with my whale tail tab and have some tabs on each signature. I will keep this for now. And then I have the, the page that I wanted get the glue out here. You can feel it, it was a hard bump that I don't want. There. Then I usually use some washi tape to reinforce this because otherwise it will crack when I sew it. 
um, the washi tape is one of the few things that I actually use that is new. In this book, there's the Tim Holtz ephemera, uh, the glue, the washi tape. Uh, I will show you later how I do that. And maybe something else. Uh, you will see as you can tag along. That one I wanted. And this one I want. There we go. That's two pages. Then I want the chapter headings. But I think I will, I will just tear those out because I just want the headers. Chapter three. No pictures here. Unfortunately. I like one of those pictures in the book that you can use to make journaling cards or um, put back in the book. Four. This book will have seven signatures. I measured the spine and it's 2.5 centimeters now that I took out the text block and that would be, I think seven signatures would be good for that. Um, I tend to do few pages but uh, more signatures and I, I, I think that's better for me that's better uh, than to have chunky signatures and just three or four or so and I always have a uneven number uh, also easier because if you have to sew in five signatures um, the center one is easy to center and then just continue on each side so I want to keep this one six at least seven one more there we go. then I said that I wanted to have one folio from the original book in each signature and I wanted seven signatures so this is two and maybe I will take the uh, fly leaves and um, clean, the, clean them up a bit and uh, put them together with either washi tape or book page and use as one I think I will do that actually so now I have three and I also want this because it says slut, which means the end in Swedish. So I have to find the signature threads in these, this end as well. Here I go. Try to a little bit more. I. I doubt that this book was ever even read because it's in such good condition everything is nice and tight and no stains and it's just been sitting on someone's shelf for a long long time maybe i should do this get rid of the back in here Makes it a bit easier to bend it open. It's cracking. But it's so hard. It sits so tight. I have been using strong glue to put this book together in 1946. When my parents were five and four years old in 1946. None of them are alive today. There we go. Let's see if we can get it loose. Yes. Wow. 
when I use signatures from the book, I want them to uh, have something interesting on them. This one I can use because then that's the last chapter, 23. I can use that. And then I want that. And it's one. Well, they will all have to be reinforced with some washi tape and glue. But that's okay. I've done that before. So one, two, three. Sorry. Four. Five. So two more. I want two more signatures. Well, what should I use? Maybe this one. XX20. It's a bit extra, right? And then I will probably cover up the text with, at least if there's these um, big pages, I will cover up the text with some g paper or onion skin paper or so and do a little bit of collaging so that they are more interesting and you can still write on them. But I like to use parts of the book because I want to use everything and if I don't use them in back in the book I could, oh this I won't use in other books but I can use them to do collage on and then back with some g paper and make tags out of it or I can uh, use it as a glue book when I do my books. Um, I keep under when I do my gluing and thinking. So there's many ways to use your books. And sometimes I buy a book because I like the insides and I want to use either pictures or whole folios in my journals. And sometimes I buy them because I like the covers. And I think all junk journals are the same. They say that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but sometimes we do. Oh, this one was glued in properly. Well, that will be reinforced. Six, one more. This one has a lot of white on it. I will use that one. And I can do some collaging. So, now I have taken out seven folios for my book. And these seven will be the, uh, maybe the anchor pages of the journal, of the signatures. I think they will be. Uh, but I will have to reinforce them. And let me just see how much time we have. Let's a bit more time. Uh, then I will also take, and this I have prepared before, one at least one uh, folio of tea dye paper, of dye paper in each signature, and I will mark them. <laughs> this is also something that I uh, picked up from Catherine over at Sunnyside Studio. Uh, I will mark them one. Uh, number them, the pay the signatures. Excuse my, I'm just blabbering today. A uh, bit tired after a long day at work. So this will be number one. And then I also mark the direction, which one is, what is up on the signature. So I don't sew them in upside down. That has happened one or twice, once or twice. When I do my tea dyeing or coffee dyeing, I always put baking soda in the coffee or tea so that I don't, so I neutralize the acids. And if you don't do that, the risk is that after a couple of years when people have been writing on these papers, 
the text will be um, gone because of the acid in the in the paper. Let's see. And seven. Then I will start filling out these folios and fill them in. And for this book, as I said last time, I will probably uh, use, since this is Eva and she is maybe 12, 13, something like that, she will um, probably have school books. So I think I will be reading all the old school, bo school books I have in my stash, and that is plenty of them. Uh, and have some pages from them and also some botanicals and bird books and different things uh, to make good a bit more color and then probably uh, plus some pictures as well um, I will also have to choose my end papers I have not gotten that far yet but I will let you tag along on that as well so now I have two folios for each signature and I think I will have maybe four more or three more uh, depending on the thickness of the paper but old school books tend to be quite thin so I'm, I'm leaning towards six uh, pages in each, six folios in each signature and if you want to know what I'm talking about this is a folio four pages one two three four that's connected that's a folio a signature is when you put several of these together and then uh, you sew them all in so each bundle is a signature that explains a bit what i'm talking about uh, then i also have to do the um, ephemera to put in and pockets and tuck spots and so on but i will take you along that as well uh, i want to show you two things two more things um i have this stamp i bought online some while a while ago it's an ex libris stamp and i stamped it on tea dye paper like this and i think i will start cutting those out and use in my on my um, either on my front pages or on the inside on the front or back cover I don't know uh, but I think they are so adorable with the owl of course uh, and I will start use them I don't want to stamp directly on the book in case it gets messy so I think I will keep on stamping on tea dyed paper and cut them out Yes, I think that's all for today. Now I will uh, go on and collect different pages from books to, and also writing pages uh, to put in my folios. And I will be back next time uh, and show you what I found. And also I think we could um, reinforce the pages. Maybe there is more pages that need to be reinforced uh, among the old school books. So thank you for watching today and thank you for sticking with me in spite of my blabbering or chatting. Um, I hope you have a great weekend and I will talk to you soon. Bye.